Hello, wild ones. Um, oh gosh, happy uh, solstice. Happy uh, new moon. Happy December. I am so glad that you've made it this far. The beginning is the hardest part. We start, you know, equal light, equal day, and then we move into the darkness, into the darkest, uh, longest night of the year. And, um, you know, the point is to learn to sit with ourselves and to, um, you know, be still and hear and see what is inside of us in the stillness and the darkness um, and the silence that, you know, is something that we are um, needing to let go of or work on and what we need to bring into our lives that will bring us joy and um, fulfillment and find our purpose. And hopefully, you know, through our um, sitting and our empathy and the activities, the intu intuitive activities, um, you're starting to learn that. And, you know, this is a process. And since in this lesson we read that time isn't linear um, or circular, it was, you know, first thought to be circular and then linear to make the Gregorian, the Gregorian calendar. And then now we're looking at it as a spiral. Um, we know that the universe is ever expanding, spiraling into the nothingness, right? So we're expanding just like us, like we're expanding our knowledge, we're expanding our experiences. So just this very first time we go through this is to bring up some maybe um, things that are surface level dark, surface level, um, you know, things that are awakenings, callings, things like that. And then as you do this every year with the cycle of nature, you'll find that you have more shit <laughs> buried. It's, an, it's never ending. It's this never ending process. It's a spiral. But we do take with us, hi puppy baby. We do take with us what we learn and what we find in each year. Just like as we talk about the seed, you know, it gathers information from its surroundings, what the plant does, and it passes it on to its seed. The seed then sprouts with this new knowledge each cycle, each spring. And we're doing that with ourselves and our um, kind of psyche, I guess, our, our energy, or whatever you want to call it. Chi, um, Shakti, Prana, whatever. Um, we're doing this on a level where we are becoming one with ourselves so we can become one with nature, so we can become one with the universe, and we can become one with whatever the hell else is out there. And we, um, you know, tend to think of the dark as bad. But really, it is what makes us whole and light and able to see the light. And that is just as important as the light part of us, the light being in us that we are also connected to. So as we sit on the darkest or longest night of the year, we release, we gather some of that information that we've been um, learning. And we learn what we need to release in this cycle and we learn what we need to uh, manifest in this cycle. And the ritual in here can be done 
the solstice ritual can be done not only just on the solstice um, but also you know on the new moon every new moon or just whenever you feel like you need um, to re-ground, reconnect, re-remember what you're doing, what you're trying to find, your purpose, what's going to lead you there on that path. And we also look into ourselves in this chapter um, to find um, what we need for a self-care ritual. Because now that we've seen the dark, we've buried ourselves, we have kind of surrendered to it and taken rest because it's really heavy. That's rest time, right? So we are now becoming awake and aware. And as we do that and we take it on as a act as an action instead of just a thought we need to take care of ourselves. so we also have in here um, self-care rituals um, I go through one that is amazing um, like a massage a self massage and you can do this every day if you want um, you know I practice on moon days self-care and it's really important on those days, on the full moons and the new moons, to realize and recognize and take that time to see how the moon affects us in our body and um, the liquids and fluids in our body and the fluids in our life and how our life is um, changing as we go through this. We also, in this chapter, um, you know, meet our inner child and um, distinguish between ourself and non-self and what we were doing is kind of coming together right in our last uh, activities and practices and what we've been doing we're kind of bringing it together bringing the non-self and the self into one sort of understanding because it is one thing. We are part of a spiral. So we are doing this continuation of this journey. And who knows, you know, it's, it's hourly, it's daily, it's weekly, it's monthly, it's um, quarterly uh, seasons, and it's yearly, it's annually. We keep spiraling and you, we don't know how big the spiral is and how little of a part we are how big of a part we are you know humanity is in this spiral um you know we have the creation we have the um enlightenment we have the age of technology we have the age of darkness and then we have the age of destruction and we have the age of knowledge and we do it all over again so we um, and then maybe, you know, we have these different cycles without humanity and different um, beings and the earth as a being and the solar system, like maybe it's that big, like we'll get into that, but um, we are a part of it and our energy is not created or destroyed. So whether or not you're like, um, you know, what you believe there is something there's something out there there's something there's a purpose for everybody and we are here to learn and live that purpose and that's what we're doing here in this book and in this lesson in this whole thing you know getting in touch with ourself and through nature we're doing that and through our intuition and so you know I'm gonna not go through um, the rituals um, 
the solstice or the the um, the, the syrup making, which is really fun, and it's really great this time of year to make um, elderberry uh, syrup for the upcoming uh, winter months, um, as we are in winter. Uh, so. I am going to talk a little bit about the inner child work. So this is probably one of the most difficult um, activities that we'll do emotionally um, because it can bring up a lot of repressed uh, memories, emotions, things like that. and. It's hard to do it honestly. The first few times, hundred times, thousand times, you know, this is also a never ending process. It's, it's a never ending work. Uh, finding your purpose, living your purpose, it doesn't end, it never ends. And so I'm gonna talk you through um, your first inner child work. I want you to find a place that's comfortable to sit and a position that's comfortable that you can stay in for a while and close your eyes, start to breathe deeply, calmly, gently, just relaxing almost coming into a meditative state. Start to relax your body. Sink down into the earth, into where you're seated. Really feel the ground beneath you, holding you up as you're also sinking down into it and that sort of give and take, make it gentle. It's a gentle process. It's holding you. The earth is holding you, cradling you while you sink into it, relaxing your face, your neck, your shoulders, your back, your legs, your feet and your toes. Don't forget to breathe long, nice, deep inhales and exhales. We don't want those short breaths that bring anxiety. And whenever you notice yourself coming into those, take a moment to reground, reassess, go back through, relaxing the forehead and the cheeks and the chin. you to imagine yourself somewhere peaceful, somewhere that is comforting and safe for you. That can be anywhere, you know, your um, grandmother's couch, the forest, um, your bed. And then imagine in front of you yourself. But now imagine yourself as a child. I want you to recognize yourself as a child and recognize how you see yourself. How old are you? What are you wearing? How is your hair? You know, is it messy? Is it done up? Is it, um, you know, nicely, freshly cut? Are you holding anything as a child? Are you holding a favorite toy, a blanket, something you used to collect, a rock? Nothing, are you holding nothing? 
Are you holding yourself, your elbows? Where are your hands and what are they doing? What are you doing as a child? As you approach yourself, is your back turned toward you? Are you hiding? What are you hiding in, behind? Are you standing out in the open, looking at yourself, looking back at your older self, ready? Just notice where your child is and what it's doing. Is your child making eye contact, avoiding you, ignoring you? Can it hear you? Can it feel you? Can it see you? Can it sense your presence? As you gaze at your child, as you as a child, what do you feel? What comes up for you? What do you notice about yourself? Do you approach yourself? Do you stay back? Do you have a conversation? Sit in this for a while. Maybe just watching your child. Maybe having a conversation. Maybe reaching out. Just see how it reacts. Maybe you're not comfortable approaching it yet. Maybe you just watch and notice. Maybe you go in for the hug. You know you're ready. And you hug each other. I want you to slowly start to say goodbye to your child, yourself. Again, notice the hair, the clothes, what it's doing, where it is, where it took you, where you started and where you ended. Start to say goodbye, but not forever. You'll be back. And that it was nice to meet it, yourself. Even if you don't say it out loud, maybe just put it out there with feeling, with your heart. You know, if your child is distant. Or you can say it right to it. It was nice to meet you. I'll be back. I'll be back to talk to you. We have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to learn from each other. And then slowly, Come back into yourself, into where you started, that place, that comfortable place, that safe place that, where you're being held. And then notice the ground and the earth holding you. And then come back into your body. Big, nice, deep breaths to come back in and let go of any tension, stress, anxiety, or fear, whatever you felt with your child. Simply acknowledge it and write it down. And then let it go until you meet your child again. This is important. It's important for you to know yourself as a child, um, even though it seems like a really strange, weird, awkward, maybe practice activity. This is where you're going to find the things that you knew as a child, that you have been taught to forget that you felt, that you wanted
wanted to be, that your purpose was, what you were here for, what steered you away from it. And it's going to be really important to get to know your child and to embrace it. And this is a practice that is, like I said, really, really difficult emotionally. And also um, really heavy to practice. So it's best to practice it um, maybe when you don't have something to do afterward. You can sit and just kind of unwind. This part of yourself is really delicate and it's really innocent and um, it's really worth the time and the wait and the effort to get to know yourself in this presence. So this practice is ideally done every day, um, but at first, you know, once a month, and once a week and then you know every other day things like that slowly work yourself into it don't dive in head first you're gonna scare your child away you know your kids gonna see this grown-up adult and get scared and run away and it's not going to tell you um, what it sees and feels and knows kind of like when you were a child and um, maybe you had an imaginary friend, or you could hear the birds talk, or um, you know you had different feelings, or spoke a, a language you made up. Um, but the adults, they just blew it off as childish things. Maybe these things were real. Maybe you were afraid to tell people about what was really inside you and your wants and your purpose because it's ingrained in you as soon as you become in this body in this world your purpose is there and it's our job to live it to find it and to be it and to serve it and for our next life you know be higher be better and keep moving forward that's how we're going to um, find ourselves and each other and oneness in humanity. And so for me personally, um, I was a, an incredibly sensitive, I, I, I don't like using that, but a child. And I still have um, sensory issues, like I get overstimulated. I was very highly overstimulated as a child. You know, I would hide behind my mom's legs. I didn't talk. I didn't speak unless I had something important to say. I didn't waste my energy. Um, so when I see myself, when I used to see myself, when I started this practice, I would come out of it in tears because my inner self, my child was by a stream playing with the rocks with its back to me and messy haired, dirty white dress. And um, she was afraid to look at me, to talk to me. She didn't know if she could trust me. She was afraid to touch, you know, um, and it was really hard to see these things about myself. Um, but, you know, I learned a lot and it's brought me to this point where all these things in the world that have collapsed around me, and I know we all have our hardships and we all have our worlds that just seem like they're unbearable sometimes. Um, but knowing my inner child and knowing my purpose through that has been 
one of the main things that has gotten me through everything since I've been practicing this and you know sometimes it takes years this isn't this isn't something that's fast none of this is and um, by the end of the course you just start it over <laughs> keep doing it every single year um, and we learn something new every single time and I really hope that um, this journey is something that maybe you didn't know you were looking for but you were and that you found it and you continue it with me and I really really appreciate you being here and I really look forward to the next lessons and videos and the light because um, we all have it inside of us and I want us all to shine and to find our purpose and to live it and live life fully no matter what your situation and maybe that is the dying you know your situation because we talk a lot about that metaphor and the actuality of it too like the plants actually dying and setting seed maybe um you know after doing this lesson this practice a few times or just up until the solstice a few times you realize it's your situation it's your job it's whatever it's your house it's these big things in your life that need to change in order for you to live your purpose but right now it's okay if it's small things it's okay if it's just you know um i need to do this in order to be more um receptive i need to let go of this i need to let go of maybe um expectation and be more receptive or something. We'll start with that, right? Um, but anyway, um, thank you and let's let that light in. <laughs>